Hello and welcome to another edition of Toys from the Attic. Now, not too long ago, we took a look at Grimlock from Fall of Cybertron. And that got me thinking, what if we took a look at some of the other Grimlocks out there? So for today, we're going to be taking a look at Grimlock from Transformers Animated. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at this guy. In Transformers Animated, Grimlock is the leader of a small band of robots called the Dinobots, which live on an island in Lake Erie. The Dinobots started out as nothing more than animatronic dinosaurs at a theme park, but were fused with Cybertronian DNA and given life thanks to the AllSpark, which was the magical MacGuffin for the show. Despite them displaying the Autobot logo, the Dinobots show no loyalty to the Decepticons or the Autobots. Rather, instead of following their own wants and desires and being led by their self-proclaimed leader of Grimlock. Grimlock is one of the most physically powerful Transformers, and has enough brute strength to even give Megatron a second thought about fighting him. A little short on brains, and even shorter on temper, Grimlock's answer to most problems is to eat it, smash it, or rip it apart. In his robot mode, he wields a powerful and effective flame sword with devastating attack. His alternate mode is that of a robotic Tyrannosaurus Rex, which is equipped with powerful crushing jaws and the ability to breathe fire out of his mouth, making him a force to be reckoned with no matter which form he is in. Alright, so here we have Transformers animated Grimlock. Now comparing him to the Fall of Cybertron Grimlock that we looked at a few weeks ago, he's not actually as tall. Which is funny because I remember when this guy came out, I thought he was one of the tallest and coolest figures that came out of that line, other than Megatron. But as you can see, he's kind of shrimpy compared to the Fall of Cybertron Grimlock. Which isn't to say that he's a bad figure. I originally thought when I bought this guy, he was going to be the same height and would have been cool, but he's just a little bit shorter. But that doesn't actually make him a bad toy. I mean, he looks very good and very on model compared to what the show was. I mean, he has those nice cartoony features and everything is really smooth with very minimal detail on it, but yet it still gives over that robot feel. He has some nice light piping on him. I have to admit that both Grimlocks, their light piping is actually very good, especially if you have like a little flashlight and you can shine it through right there. You can see how much that glows up and really gives the look of the show, how much it glows. All well, interesting factor is, if you compare it to the other Grimlock, his eyes are blue, where his eyes are red. Now that's a little bit more from the G1 standpoint, but I don't know, I, I still like the blue look anyways. He has some very nice articulation, although it is a little bit limited in the shoulder area because of these uh, fins right here. So you can't get too far, however he can move his arms all the way up and it is ball jointed. His elbows are a little bit limited right here too they can only move up so far and because of his transformation gimmick I'm never quite sure if I can get the arms all the way in or not so he kinda has these long gorilla-ish style arms you can see how they come way down to his knees he does have a little bit of nice wrist articulation here so like when you put his sword in he is able to pose it in many different ways get him right up here all right and we'll get to his sword in just a second now, he has a nice whip, hip swivel right here. Yeah, I'm getting a little tongue-tied. But that's more in line with his transformation. And I don't know if it was really put into this as a forethought or anything, but it, it does give him a little bit of nice features for if you're wanting to pose him. Now, his the knees on this one are a little bit weak, so they don't quite stand up as well if I put him in odd poses. I actually got this guy used at a BotCon convention, so he's... He might be a little bit played with, but as you can see, he does pose rather nicely. Uh, he does have some little bit of articulation here on the shins, I would say. So you're able, so that's another little added feature that's kind of nice. As far as weapons go, he only comes with one, but it's this really cool flame sword. I do have some issues with it, but I'll go into that a little bit more when it comes to his Dinobot mode. As for this, it does have a little bit of a gimmick. It has this little switch in here that when you're able to put it in the hand, the flames are able to shoot out on the side. Now, like I said, mine's a little bit old, so the gimmick isn't quite working really well. So I'm gonna have to take this little uh, hairpin. Ah, there we go, and pop it out. So you can see how the flames actually jet out from the side. It gives it a little bit more of that feel that it is something that's made out of molten magma or fire that's just raging up with flame. I have so seen some people customize these and paint the rest of what's supposed to be um, magma here, like how this 
this black area they've extended it all the way up and that actually helps add with the flames that are coming out here and it looks really cool I haven't done it on mine because I'm not sure if I wanted to destroy the value of the toy or not but I think I might end up doing that anyways it just fits into his hand right here now it can fit uh, oh, well, actually I'll just show it. it can fit into either hand so it doesn't really matter however this hand is the only one that has a little gimmick switch in there that'll make the flames come out let me try to get that in there so it fits very snugly now another neat little thing that I like is how his hands are able to actually clasp over it other Grimlocks in the past have made it to where a fist pops out but they've actually made it to where the toes are the actual hand so that gives them another little bit of added articulation and gives them a little bit more character all right now I really can't go on without talking about the head and face to the best of my knowledge, this is the first actual Grimlock that's actually had a jaw and a movable mouth that he would actually talk through. All the other ones had a little face mask that would kind of wiggle when he talked, but this is the first one with a jaw. And I really like it, actually. The little teeth on here really add, add to the feel that he is a Dinobot, and it actually reminds me of his regular Dinobot mouth with all of its little sharp teeth. And his jaw, the squareness of it, reminds me a little bit of Gutsman from Me the Mega Man series. And as you... Anyone who's a fan of that series knows that he's one of the strongest villains or robot masters in that line. So just that square jaw reminds me of that and gives me that feel that, yeah, this guy is a strong character. Alright, now as far as transforming him, it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. What you want to start off with is actually pulling his Dinobot head up a little bit, and that's going to actually release this little tab that actually holds his chest up. After that, you can slide his chest down. Now I'd like to actually point out that I really like how they added this little extra bit of detail of gears and other little electronics in here. They didn't have to do that, but that actually goes to, the, goes to show the extra mile that they put into this guy. To show that there's other stuff underneath here than it's just simple plastic or simple actual smooth bits. It's actually showing that there's some robotic parts underneath. And now I'm actually kind of rambling. Ugh. Anyways, back to the transformation. What you want to do then is pull his head forward, and there's these two tabs right here that actually fit into these slots. Oh, actually, let me move his little Dinobot arms out, or little Grimlock T-Rex arms. But anyways, what you want to do next is actually slide this up and make sure those actually snap into place. Because uh, that's going to actually hold the chest right here in place while it fits over the head. Next, you just slide his head over, and that's pretty much about it. Next thing, you have these little back parts of the heels or the feet. Now, you're going to want to slide those forward. And this is about as far as they slide. When I first was transforming this guy, I thought they would have gone a little bit more. But nope, they just go about this far. After that, you just slide his legs up. And make sure that they are snapped together. Ah, and that's actually going to continue to hold the rest of his torso right here. And give a little bit more of his back. After that, what you want to do... Oh, let me move his arms down. Is just slide the tail bits out like this. And that kind of completes the bulk of his transformation. Uh, after that, you're going to want to pull his arms out right here to extend his legs. Then flip his wrists around and extend his hands to finish off the pads of his feet. Uh, let me do that on the other side now, too. Uh, and it really gives him that hunched look. And... Uh, him down... And really, that's about it as far as the transformation of Grimlock goes. Um, Comparison-wise to the fall of Cybertron, I think he's actually a little bit bigger in this mode. Oh, let me fix that right there. Ah, there we go. Uh, let's compare him to the other Grimlock. So, yeah, uh, that's what's odd is this guy looks a lot bigger and more menacing in robot mode, where this guy looks a lot cooler in his Dinobot mode, which is very odd. But anyways... Maybe not. Now, he is very show accurate to the animated line. Um, however, what I actually like about this guy is he's more of the modern day T Rex. Um, the old Dinobots, their tails, as you can see, he, the Solo Cybertron one, actually kind of goes more off the old Tyrannosaurus Rex designs that I grew up with, where the tail kind of just drags and kind of goes behind. This one is more accurate to how kind of a T-Rex, how they, well, scientists, how scientists think a T-Rex would be, where the tail would actually be up in the air and used as a counterbalance. 
Now with that, I will admit that his tail actually does look a little bit small and dinky compared to the rest of his body. I do wish it was a little bit bigger, but then also I wish the fall of Cybertron's tail was, Grimlock's tail was a little bit smaller, but what can you do? Now the light piping on here actually still kind of transfers over, and it still is kind of nice to have these little tiny T-Rex eyes glow and shine up. Um, I do wish that this was a little bit more red because it gives that more menacing feel, but he does have a nice little pair of blue eyes. Now a neat gimmick on this actual particular Grimlock, oh, flashlight fell over over there. Now the neat thing about this particular Grimlock is he has a little switch here that actually makes his jaw move up and down. I actually really like this because it actually gives a feel that you could actually have him talk. Me, Grimlock King! No, sorry. Sorry about my bad Grimlock impersonation right there. But still, it gives you that appeal, a feeling that he could actually talk or that his nice, really sawtooth jaws are able to clamp down on anything and really tear him apart. Now, I was saying that there's an, I have an issue with the actual sword and it comes to the Dinobot mode right here. Is My issue is I don't know where this thing could be stored or where I could put it in his transformation. All the other vehicles up to this point had a little slot or a peg that you can attach their weapons to and it became part of their transformation. This guy in this sword, I have no idea where I could put this. I've guessed that I could maybe attach it up here, but it doesn't really hold anywhere. So that's that's the only thing that I get, have a problem with because it would have been cool to attach to this someplace or have it fold and tuck into someplace. I, to, for me, I have no idea where that is, but... I don't think any of the Dinobot lines actually had this. Now the reason why this is a big issue for me is because that means that I can lose this real easily. Well, not me right now that I'm an adult, but I remember when I was a kid in the first generation one toys, a lot of times their weapons were just something you pegged on and if you didn't really need them you just kind of tossed them to the side or they were pegged on in their vehicle mode. They weren't actually part of the transformation. so that it made it real easy to lose them and so I'm thinking that any kid who's playing with this thing might actually lose the sword eventually and just be stuck with a weaponless Grimlock although he doesn't really need a weapon he is one of the strongest guys but still if anyone out there can see my point and see what I'm talking about yeah that is just an issue for me uh, ever since they started actually incorporating the weapons in a little slot or making it part of the transformation I've liked that a lot more because it means you can't lose their accessories I can't stress that enough. Is losing accessories to these guys is one of my pet peeves that I've always, always hated. Anyways, this has been a look at Transformers Animated Grimlock. Rawr. Once again, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen today, please feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment below in the comment section. Any advice for the show will be greatly appreciated. Who knows, something you suggest may appear on the show in the future.